All right, FAQ number 40, we have the question, are Unix sodomites? Uh, this is another desperate uh, piece of lying that the sodomite uh, community out there that they try to pull off. They try to say that uh, in the Bible, Unix are, are gay men, you know, and stuff like this. And, and uh, Jesus promoted the thing of a Unix, so therefore Jesus was for sodomy. Uh, it, again, it's, it's absolutely absurd. I mean, the Bible is crystal clear. The King James Bible is crystal clear, I should say. Not the other ones. They are, you know, they're not clear. The new version is from the Vatican, because the Vatican's filled with sodomite, you know, priests and things. But the King James Bible is crystal clear that, that man lying with man is an abomination. And the same thing with woman and woman. It's an abomination. Romans chapter 1, it's in the Pauline epistles, it's in the church age, church age doctrine. You can't duck it. You can't just say it's Old Testament, the book of Leviticus condemns sodomy, but not anymore today. In Genesis, you know, it was, sodomy was bad, and Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by God, but not for today. No, it's for today too. Romans chapter 1, okay. Uh, the, the mark of a reprobate mind is a uh, number of things, but sodomy is at the, is at the top of the list. Okay, so... Uh, to try and say, well, you know, we can make the argument for Unix being sodomites, and that undoes all the rest of the evidence. Absolutely ridiculous. But let's actually look at the passage that these perverts will quote to try and justify their sin. Matthew chapter 19, we're going to start here in verse 10. Okay, it says here, His disciples say unto him, well, let me say this before I read the verses. Um, right up above it here, you have the thing of, of the Pharisees there, they're asking, uh, Jesus, you know, is there, can a man put away his wife, you know, and things, and Jesus is like, well, you know, except it be for fornication, you're not to put away your wife. And the disciples come in there like, wow, that's kind of, you know, tough. I mean, it's probably better just to stay single. Okay? Let's look at this. Verse 10, His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Now, somebody that is, it's not good to marry, uh, what is that? That's a single person. That's not a sodomite. Verse 11, But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. Single men. You say, how do you know that? Keep your hand there in Matthew chapter 19 and turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Okay? Jump down to verse 6 there in that chapter. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. See how Paul's statements tie in with what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying over here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 11. See? In other words, and when Paul, by the way, when he says, let me just address another little thing that will come up. He says, I speak this by permission, not by and not of commandment there. He's not saying this statement that I'm making is not inspired by the Lord. Okay, he's not saying, I'm just speaking this of my own mind and whatever. He's just saying, this is, I'm allowed to say this thing, that it's better to stay single, but this is not a commandment of God. You're not commanded to stay single. There's no celibacy, you know, forced celibacy in the Bible. All right, so that's not what's going on there. Paul is just simply saying, as a single guy, I'm speaking this by permission. I'm telling you that it's better, but you're not commanded to do this. It's still inspired by the Holy Spirit for him to say that. But going back here to Matthew chapter 19, verse 12, let's read this first, because here's where the sodomites will take you. Now, there was a whole website, some guy sent it to me the one time, and could you debunk this? And I mean, the lies were just so numerous, I'm not even going to give you this website, because the guy was such a deceiver. I mean, he was quoting Peter Ruckman, you know, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, who was radically opposed to sodomy. And he's quoting him like, like Ruckman is, even Dr. Peter S. Ruckman can't answer the thing that sodomites are bad. And he was misquoting things from his one commentary on the book of Romans. But um, let's continue. Verse 12. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. Okay, men that are single and they're born that way. I've known men that are that way. They just never have a desire to get married. 
They don't have any problem with lust or anything else. So they just go on about living their lives as single men. So you have there the first group, eunuchs that are born that way from their mother's womb. Now look at the second one. Okay, if you want to make this sodomy, you're going to have a real problem there. Okay, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. How do you make another man a, uh, just a straight man? How do you make him a sodomite, a pervert? And why would the, you know, if, if you'd say, well, you just, you know, forcibly rape him until he's okay with it or something like this. And now he's a, now he's a eunuch or something. Now he's a sodomite eunuch. Uh, why would Jesus promote that? How do you make a straight man a sodomite, a non-pervert a pervert? <laughs> How do you do that? No, it's talking about single men, okay? And if you study the historical thing there, you look back in the Old Testament, a lot of times, like, you have the king of Babylon, he comes along and he captures the young Jewish men, and he basically turns them into eunuchs. And what is a eunuch? A man that has been castrated. Look that up if you don't know what that means. Uh, that was something that was actually done in ancient Egypt and, and Babylon and some of these other uh, nations like that. And they would actually force men into this surgical procedure where they, whereby they were not able to fornicate with the king's wife or his daughters or anybody else. Now, you can trust that man as a servant taking care of your wife and things because there's nothing he can do. Okay, that's how you can, how you can have a man make a eunuch of another man. Let's continue. Uh, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. You say now, okay, what about that? Uh, well, okay, what is the kingdom of heaven? Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven, as I've said in many studies, is the earthly physical kingdom with the headquarters in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from that uh, in the millennial kingdom. And there has never been one city, one other city on this earth that has been fought over as much as the city of Jerusalem. Okay, the violent take it by force. That's what's being referred to there. Now, if eunuchs are sodomites, what good would it do to become a sodomite for the kingdom of heaven's sake? I mean, think of the warped philosophy there. You know, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the best thing that you can do is become a sodomite so that you can make it into the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Huh? Uh, when the Lord obviously calls that thing an abomination, it's a very grievous sin in His sight. And this is going to help you get into the kingdom of heaven. See, these sodomites are, are seriously mentally ill up here. Turn next to... Matthew chapter 24, I'll show you what's going on here. Why would you make yourself a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven's sake? Uh, let's see here, try to find the verse. Okay, verse uh, 19, Matthew 24, verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Okay, women that are with child. It does not say pregnant, by the way. You ought to change your vocabulary a little bit there. If you're saying some woman is pregnant, no, no, it's the Bible term is with child. Adds a whole new meaning and, and kind of gives you, you know, a reason why you should never have an abortion. If you're with child, it doesn't say with fetus or with tissue or something like this. You're with child. That's a child in there. Okay, side issue, but I just wanted to say that. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, a breastfeeding mother. So, when you are in that time of Jacob's trouble, and I don't mean you as in saved Christians because we're going to be out of here before it, but when somebody goes into that time of Jacob's trouble, uh, is it going to be a problem to have a wife that's with child and, or have a wife that has a, you know, have a newborn child when you can't buy or sell unless you've taken the mark of the beast? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a real big problem. It's going to be a very big problem. So, um, Maybe some good advice in that time period would be for a young man to uh, make himself a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven's sake. See, just read the King James Bible, brethren. You compare scripture with scripture, it all works out. And these dirty perverts come along, and they are dirty perverts. And I say that, I'm not saying that just because I hate 
sodomites and I'm going to start railing on them and, you know, doing a Westboro Bathlick thing of uh, God hates fags or something like this. That's not even necessary. Okay. Uh, sodomy is a sex perversion problem and it is a problem that actually is you're sterilizing yourself and you're not doing it because of trying to, you know, get into the kingdom of heaven or something like this. That's not why, why they're doing it. They're doing it because God's given them over to a reprobate mind. Read Romans chapter 1. Uh, they go after strange flesh. It's, it's perversion. And I actually had a brother send me an article here where now the sodomites, many of them, are starting, it's, it, you know, it used to be LGBT, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Now they're, thr they're trying to throw uh, pedophilia in with it. You know, and they got this NAMBLA thing that was founded by Catholic priests, by the way, the National American Man-Boy Love Association. That should be illegal. Um, that is extreme wickedness. Uh, there should be no laws protecting that kind of nonsense, those kind of perverts. But uh, that's what you have uh, in this country. And it's really, really bad. So uh, back, getting back to the original question, <laughs> are eunuchs sodomites? Absolutely not. 